just like you can see the title is um, basically stating there excel solver can actually be used to carry out what is called a uh, fit formulation ration formulation you can actually use it to compute rations balance ration least cost rations things like that um, i know because i've done it i know because i've seen people who do it in terms of i've seen their work online um, however it takes some considerable proficiency in the use of spreadsheets especially excel in this case uh, in order for you to use a tool like solver in excel successfully in other words accurately or reliably to formulate rations for animals it's prone to a lot of errors if you do not have that level of proficiency then even when you are competent or proficient the truth is anybody can make errors in the use of spreadsheets and in this video i'm going to talk based on this document you see on your screen i'm going to be describing to you uh, a few examples of how this happens and why in the long run it will make sense for you to find a way to automate whatever it is you are doing with excel even if you're using the solver find a way to automate it to and building what is called data validation okay data entry validation checks if you don't do that you'll be setting yourself up for a big disaster remember feed formulation is a process that is designed to achieve it's not it's not an end in itself you have formulation feed or formulation rations in order to feed animals that have been commercially reared to generate some output so maybe eggs maybe meat whatever so you because of what you want to achieve it's a commercial venture you want to make money from it you want to make profits so if you do it wrong in terms of feeding we tend to be constitute about 70 percent and above of the cost of most livestock farm enterprises then you're in big trouble if you get it wrong this is why it's never good to to use something that is prone to error in handling uh, the activity of feed formulation however some people have budget constraints and so as you see in this document for those of you that want to just follow the instructions i'm going to give subsequently in a few seconds you'll understand how you can get a copy of it but basically like i said in the document um you can learn how to do it okay there are tools online that i describe in the book i give you links to to download them where you can get them that allows you to actually learn how to use our solver to do it however you just have to exercise caution when you're doing so and i tell some really true stories um about how um, those errors cannot come about and really cause devastating um negative impact on, on your on your process in terms of livestock um, um production so please uh, keep this in mind as you listen to this and understand like i said that automation can actually help you this is the reason why a lot of people buy my application and our applications like mine you don't necessarily have to buy from me just understand that you need to protect yourself from yourself <laughs> that's the way i like to put it all right please go on and listen to the rest of the recording cheers uh the document you see on your screen is available for free for any interested person all you have to do is um send me your whatsapp number your full name your job title the company you work with your location maybe the country we are in that's all i need and um, your whatsapp number send all of that to me through your uh, to my email address um t-a-y-o at t-k-s-o-l-a.com and i'll send it to you and why would you want to have a copy of that report because i assure you the information it contains huh, describes potentially serious ways extremely serious ways in which um microsoft excel can hurt you instead of helping you uh i know a lot of people know how to use excel a lot of people uh let me tell you a story to, to understand what i mean because i there are excel experts everywhere but the thing is that expertise occurs at different levels but let me tell the story then you know there was a time it was in um yeah it was 2008 i remember now 2008 2009 then, yes i was marketing one of my software there was this software i started out with in 2008 when i we moved house <laughs> for the first time i was you know it wasn't it wasn't easy we had moved from the bagada family house and we uh, had moved to uh, a place called yakoyo area and you do do local government area and anyway, so i i was um, still relatively a struggling startup entrepreneur my brand was not really established i had not de developed this the advanced forms of functioning that I have today, where I'm able to work remotely and not even have to 
physically seek out any prospective buyers for my solutions. So at that time, I was um, doing a lot of pavement pounding. So one day, I walked into the office <laughs> of in a place called Anifoshi. Funny enough, I have another client there now that I work with a lot. You know, but then at that time, I would park my car. Uh, I didn't have fuel in my car, and I would walk and walk and walk and walk long distances. Crazy thinking about it now. So I walked into this man's office, and I told him, you know, he was an accountant. I saw that he had. And there were two employees behind computers. He was sitting behind one computer and he had some. It seemed they were clients sitting next to him. And he was talking to them when I walked in. I greeted him and I told him I, uh, why I was there. And I, I, I offered solutions in which I helped people to customize Microsoft Excel and automate it, you know, to do what they were doing, to help them do it faster, more accurately, and um, with, less effort, with less effort. I was just going through my elevator speech when he stopped me midway and said excel i said yes you want to build software with me with excel, for me with excel what's wrong with you he said what do you know about excel i can teach you excel i mean you should have seen this man he was coming at me as if we had met somewhere before and i had offended him but that was not the issue the point was he was telling me to my face telling me pointedly and in a very uh, condescending tone that there was nothing I could teach him or show him about Excel that he did not already know. That do you know what I do? You know, he's an account, was an accountant, of course. So he he, he must. If I know, if I go by what I've seen, many of the accountants I work with do. They are very good at manual crawling around on spreadsheets, building formulas on them, very cumbersome formula structures. Uh, many of them do not even know how to use all the advanced. Uh, tools in Excel, which will eliminate the use of the use of. In fact, even the way they use the formulas are quite inefficient. In many cases, they are very elementary in the way they use it. They do not know about the database functions that are in there or the complex uh, uh, compound formulas you can build that allow you to do a lot of uh, serious um, data analysis. So, I, I I could just imagine in my mind what he was talking about that he thought was like, you know, guru level stuff. So. I knew I knew that because I had done this so many times. I've gone to computer schools. I start with that kind of conversation with the person who's supposed to be a trainer in the school. By the time I'm done with him, he's asking me, man, can I have your phone number? How do you do this stuff I'm seeing on your computer? So many of them do not even know it's possible. That's why they talk that way. So this man was coming at me and he basically just told me, look, don't waste my time. I'm very busy. I could as well teach you an example. I don't even have the time for that, but come on. Go and find something better to do. You can't be serious. You can't be offering this as a solution. Can you leave my office, please? That was how he walked me out. But I will tell you this. That same day, I left, when I left him, that same day, later in the night, I ended up in Omolifis 1, and I got hired by the owner of a, a, a what do you might call, a mini hotel, okay, uh, in Omolifis 1, to build a custom spreadsheet software for managing her, you know, room and body. You know, so, so you had this hotel, mini hotel, where she had rooms for sale, for rent, and then um, restaurant and bar and all that with the employees. So, um, just so that, just let you have that story ended. From there, that same software I built for that mini hotel, I would later sell it to White House hotels. And you know, it's been interesting. I built and built, and that was really the point at which I was really ramping up stuff. And making more sales and all that. Then at a point, I decided to go online. But that, that's all f stuff for a different recording. So but the point I'm making is that I've had those experiences, but I want to tell you another one. There was a time in again it was 2000. And, okay, no, that was 2009, I believe. Um, I had been hired by this company in Seoul. CEO had hired me to build a software. Initially, it was supposed to be for factory management. It was handling all the data, so I called it the factory. Uh, factory operations business manager or something like that. Uh, we even developed some KPI tools that were unique to the company. You know, I did a lot of best practice stuff for him. Five um, S. I trained the staff. We did. Oh, it was amazing stuff. So anyway, he began to use the software, and at some point, he called me back in to put in a PNL interface. I had to work with one of my chartered accountant clients. Um, was a friend as well. Because we really got, I really got into hot water building that PNL thing. But we, okay, so we began to, he began to use the software. Then there was a particular period when they called in an auditor to audit their accounts because he had partners anyway. So that was one of the requirements. And when the auditor came, he raised 
an issue with the total sales figure for the six month period we were looking at and he questioned the final figure that was being generated by the application so um because he didn't agree with the book records he had been reviewing and this this was like wow a big issue because they weren't expressing that and they were trying to do that audit because they needed to apply for a loan facility one of the banks so it, it, there was kind of a time limit they were, were working against time so they sent for me and i was the one that trained that young lady to use the application of course i built the application so when i came in i asked her about it and she said she hadn't made any errors i said are you sure she said yes i said do you recall i told you when you're using this system you've got to be careful because you can make inadvertent erroneous posts posts into the application if you are not attentive because you see once you're using excel manually the spreadsheet application all kinds of disasters can happen particularly if it's a big spreadsheet or even a multi spreadsheet that has each set spreadsheet being big the minute you have big tables and all of that it can be extremely difficult to trace or track down errors you've made erroneous entries you've made uh what are the errors you can make one of the very common errors people make and some of them even as i'm speaking to you now some of you have it in your worksheets workbooks you don't know they are there and they are actually generating erroneous totals and um, final values for you you do not know and i'm talking as a person that's a reasonably uh, expert user of Excel. Now, why am i saying this look this young lady was arguing and she was adamant and the accountant was the auditor was saying if we don't get this right this thing cannot go because these figures are not wrong i saw they're not correct they're wrong so we need to sort this out there must be an error somewhere it's either the book records are wrong or the uh, software entries are wrong and he said look the book records are correct because i've used the sales invoices to double check them and they're okay so i said okay no problem i know how to do audits auditing of a spreadsheet so i have some techniques i use i did it and within about two minutes i narrowed down to the cell where the problem was and when i called them to take a look at it and what i found was that she had mistakenly made a hundred thousand dollar entry for a sales a sales a sale that took place on a particular day but preceded that entry with an apostrophe it happens these things happen she was in a hurry apparently on that day when i talked to her later when she was to explain herself she was make i think got a phone call i was responding to the phone call while kind of trying to prepare to save the workbook or something and somehow the entry that was already in there got called up in edit mode and uh, the possible was added by anyway the, the value went back in but this time around it had an apostrophe preceding it if you know anything about microsoft excel you know that once an apostrophe precedes a numeric value it automatically gets treated as text by excel so visually on your screen you will see the value it will look normal but actually in the cell excel no longer treats as a number now as excel has continue to develop advanced versions you had newer versions what has happened is that excel has become more tolerant of some of these things in which you may want to have text sitting side by side in the same or sitting in line with numbers in a column in a cell in a, in a worksheet so that was what happened the thing was in the column along with other entries in previous uh, cells above it and below it and yet it appeared normal so they were seeing the hundred thousand error it was there but it was not a value it was a text entry it was not a numeric value and as a result the total was short by that amount now how did i notice it it was simple i scrolled through it when when, when i checked or when, i cannot begin to give it details so it's that what i did what i'm saying is that i was able to narrow down and then look in the edit mode at the entry so i was checking the entry in the area where i found that the values were not agreeing okay and then i said okay I checked and i saw the apostrophe and that was the, the minute to remove the apostrophe the values equalized and the problem was solved but think about it this way what if the auditor had not been called in what if they had just simply printed out the report and they had been lucky that they were given approval that value that was the difference could have led them to make some huge losses because it was giving them a completely different picture of what the situation at that time was decided to do a quick demonstration of what actually happened in that application just to show you the kind of error she had but <clears throat> even though what you see on the screen right you just see about um, seven rows for seven days what we had was data for an entire year so it was a huge spreadsheet imagine trying to find one entry that had this error 
but anyway there's a technique i use so this is just a kind of a micro version of that you see i put a formula that taps from each of the columns where i think there's a problem into an empty cell so you just tap it out using the equal sign just you call out the formula you know you're just using an equal sign to recall the content from each cell and drag down what you copy those of you who know excel you know what i'm saying so once you do that you find out that anyone that's not actually a numeric value will display different alignment so normally numeric values display right alignment and by default except if formatted and the other um, the text entries would uh, have a left alignment now you can see there that there was an apostrophe okay in the uh, media that was preceding the entry of that numeric value and that's what converted it into a text excel automatically handled it as text and we removed it from the submission it was doing because it's, it's now it's, it's the, with the improvements in Excel is actually it's tolerant of such mixtures. The problem is you may not know that. Now, why was this possible? It was because people use formatting indiscriminately sometimes. So this lady had formatting that enabled the text version to also stay, um, with, you know, centralized along with all the other um, numeric values she had there. Um, use them um, central alignment for. All right. So it wasn't showing because she had formatted all the the columns to just because she wanted to look at everything to look nice unfortunately that formatting now hid the fact that one of the entries was actually text value or not a numeric value so that's what you saw on your screen now you can imagine therefore if you had that multiple happening multiple times maybe the person is a very um haphazard user of spreadsheet or doesn't pay attention whatever the my case might be that will lead to major 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 errors being built in into the application now the funny thing is like i said in my presentation you will actually find people who have such errors in their spreadsheet that are being used for serious decision making they don't even know the errors are there and they are bragging and saying everything is okay until someone like me picks up the spreadsheet and spends some time doing an audit and then i start picking up big issues i sometimes have to keep my mouth shut because if i were to have um, spoken out about what i found in some accounts and spreadsheets they would probably have been, been made to leave their jobs you know, so please be careful when you use your spreadsheets. There are two stories that um, I, I believe will be of interest to anybody uh, because these are stories that got international level attention. Two stories, international level attention because it, these stories had to do with uh, mistakes that were made by experts and they made massive errors in their competitions in Excel that led to major losses by people that were depending on their output from excel to take decisions about investment all right well one of them was reported by the bbc <laughs> that was a crazy one i remember i was in Cotonou when i saw that story it was crazy and the other one was re reported by uh, forbes.com you know um, and believe me those two stories alone show how dangerous excel can be excel is using so many Please, kinds of activities, so many kinds of business, so kind of many kind of markets, uh, in different kinds of industries, by different levels of users for different kinds of purposes, including sales, marketing, manufacturing. Believe me, sports, they use Excel a lot. I did this video because I just wanted to kind of talk people through understanding that even though you are comfortable with Excel, even though you know how to use Excel, you need to understand that your level of uh, proficiency in use of microsoft excel is a function of your mental alertness and physical dexterity or your psychomotor skill so sometimes you want to press two you press three and you make that entry without noticing so two hundred thousand becomes three million you know you even put an extra zero these things happen so if you don't have automation built in, if you don't have what you call data validation built in, man, using Excel can be like walking in a, in a mild minefield. You could have your legs blown off. You could like have the life snuffed out of you, literally, figuratively speaking, because this use of Excel is something that the controls are not in place to protect you from yourself. And believe me, you need to protect yourself from yourself when you're using Excel manually. This is why I actually gravitated towards use of spreadsheet automation when I was in paid employment because I saw how it saved us a lot of heartache, a lot of headaches, 
um, that was why I actually ventured into special automation. I saw a gentleman from Scotland who was my boss then, Richard Chambers, using it. Uh, that was at that time Lotus 123 was the standard. Excel was literally nowhere to be found in the Nigeria market at that time. You know, later on, however, the company I was working with then, uh, Guinness Nigeria, they migrated to the use of um, the office um, platform. So we took all our spreadsheets on Lotus 123 and transformed them to Excel. Uh, VB applications. I didn't do that. It was a gentleman called Mark Jackson, but that's the story for another day. The point I'm making is that uh, that was really when I began to understand, apart from the fact that it will save you from errors, automation will also save you time and effort. You know. So the essence of this video, therefore, is to just point out the fact that yes, you may be good at Excel, but believe me, there are better ways to use Excel um, for for improved output if you choose to automate it. So you are good at doing it manually. Understand that you can take your productivity to the next level. Here's one thing, um, a quote, I think I will end this with that really help you to understand. And this is by a mentor of mine. He, never, he doesn't even know I exist, but this is one of the people I modeled my work after. His name is Pierre Leclerc. He's a French Canadian, an MVP, a Microsoft um, um, Most Value Professional. And he's a veteran Excel VB solution developer. A true guru in this, if, if that word is ever to be applied to anybody. That's one man. He really makes it look like a man is a superman, you know. Here's what he says. Everybody knows some Excel, but stop seeing Excel as an office program that everybody masters and that is, that, and that is used to organize numbers in columns and make a few calculations. Excel is the best reporting application on the market and it is fully programmable with its own programming language within called VBA. VBA being Visual Basic for Applications. All right, this man is, like I said, a, I consider him a legend. The stuff I've seen him do over the last, and this was like, he was already like a well established guru. So when I found him, he was like just cruising, he was coasting, he was in his late 60s. So I'm sure he's uh, probably over 70 something, maybe late 70s now. You know, so he was sharing a lot of advanced stuff. By the time I discovered those things, I took my work on Excel to a whole different level. And later on, I decided to buy the programming Bible. Excel, you need to take your usage of Excel to this level I'm describing because it is what will enable you to achieve improved productivity and um, superior output because there's a whole lot you can do for Excel. Listen, if something is taking you four hours to do in Excel, I assure you that with automation you can do it in maybe 30 minutes, probably lesser. You know, they, they, these are things I did way back in Guinness and these are things I helped people do with the applications I built today. You know, so I've done that, build applications in various markets, hotels, hospitals, restaurants, bars, um, financial com consultants, um, farm business owners, you know, all sorts. I've done Excel applications in business centers. Uh, it's been amazing. And believe me, when you do it, you will see the difference. It's measurable. People are able to relate to that why they pay for it. And I, if you have any questions about this, get back to me and I'll be glad to help. Cheers.